here I am, minding my own business, looking at what's going on at AUVSI 2014 and what, a passive variable pitch propeller. Okay, outside of sounding like back magic, tell me what's going on here. Well, what we've created is the very first passive variable pitch propeller. So that means that this system changes pitch in flight without the use of electronics or hydraulics. And where is this being used? This is being used on a tactical level UAV, such as a Shadow 200 type aircraft. We're not using it on their aircraft at the moment, but we would love to have them as a potential customer. What is the technology involved? How does it work? The technology is really quite simple. It basically senses the load on the propeller and distributes it throughout the system. So in takeoff position, for example, we would want it like first gear in a car to absorb that performance at the takeoff point. As the aircraft transitions through into cruise flight, the propeller unloads into a coarser pitch, allowing for faster travel through the air using the same amount of energy. How would you adjust something like this to meet your mission profile? Well, depending on what our customer is going to be using the aircraft for, if it's a lot of up and down, we would tweak it for that type of performance. If it's just line kilometers back and forth, um, we would ad adapt that technology to basically give the maximum amount of performance in that range of flight. Obviously, you're displaying this at a, a uh, UAV symposium, but will we see this in manned aircraft, GA market? Our partnership with Sensenik is fantastic as they provide propellers both for unmanned systems, airboat market, and the light sport, and general aircraft. The next market will be the smaller six horsepower range, and then we're looking at the uh, airboat market, followed by the light sport or experimental aircraft market. What was the genesis behind this idea? How did this come about? Well, what we recognized was that the standard variable pitch propellers, which were hydraulic or electronic, were very, very heavy. Uh, our operators didn't want to trade off the extra weight for the extra performance. It was just not an, e not an even match. So by creating a passive system, it's just a bolt-on system, easy to use, uh, easy field maintenance, uh, it comes at a slightly lighter weight, and uh, is something that the industry hasn't seen. Speaking of maintenance, how would something like this be maintained? What's, uh, what kind of program maintenance is uh, necessary for it? And more important, who can work on it? Well, anybody can work on the hub system. We have a system in place, depending on the type of environment that you're going to use it in, where you would send it back to us, we can overhaul the system for you at a recommended number of hours. At this point, have you been able to determine whether or not this is as reliable, more reliable than an equivalent constant speed or otherwise variable pitch propeller? We're still in that phase of really determining the viable ultra long-term feasibility of the system. You know, right now we've tested it to a few hundred hours, so until we have several thousand hours behind us, we're going to sort of take it one level at a time just to make sure our customers are really getting the best performance they can. Is there any known failure mode with this kind of system? The only thing that can go wrong are any of the internal parts. So far, there's, there's two safety features built into this propeller system. One is that the, the propellers can, simply cannot come out of the hub system. And two, that if anything goes wrong on the inside, there's basically a fail-safe stop so it cannot go beyond a certain pitch. Basically, what will happen with this is if you lose the spring system, the one that regulates our constant speed mechanism, if you will, it'll just basically go to the full course position. Do you have any idea yet on how cost-effective this is going to be in comparison to an equivalent a variable pitch prop in the market? The price is going to be very similar, maybe just slightly less. We hope that the trade-off between the ease of use and the gain in performance and the increase in the lightness will basically be the equivalent trade-off. Well, I appreciate the info. At some point, I'm going to have to wait till you get something man and try it out. It looks like a really intriguing proposition, and I thank you much for your time. It's our pleasure. Thank you. Aero TV is brought to you by Rebuilding the Sport Aviation World One Aviator at a Time. That's ANN's new Aero Sports ebook series, your resource guide to the ultimate in aviation adventures. Aero Sport will feature the straight skinny on learning and enjoying 16 unique aviation sports, from ultralights and ballooning to aerobatics, gyroplanes and hang gliders to parachuting, home builds and general aviation to RC models. All this and more will be coming soon with the new updatable Aero Sport guide for your favorite electronic devices. Get your advance order in now at www.aero.com. Aero-sport.net.